Today we are at Charmouth in Dorset looking for fossils. Now hopefully today we're going to find something we can pick up and take home. Lovely early December day, bright sunshine, freezing cold. So we're wrapped up nice and warm and we're going to go for a walk along the beach and we're going to see if we can find some fossils this time to actually pick up and take home with us. Now I'm just going to check and see. Right, so fossil collecting, no digging in the cliffs, I wasn't going to anyway. Report any impo important fossils, we're not likely to find any. We're not digging in the cliffs today because it's just not a very good idea anyway. For one thing it encourages cliff falls, the other thing is the kind of fossils you find in the cliffs are often crumbly and just fall apart. So it's much better to look on the foreshore and look for, look for fossils that have weathered out and that have survived the erosion process on the beach because those are the ones that will be a bit more durable and worth keeping. Across this uh, river, creek or whatever you want to call it and we're going to get down to the beach this way. Right, she can come off now. Okay, I haven't got anything to throw. No, you just got to go and enjoy yourself. Go on. No, just go and frolic. I'm not throwing any of those rocks. Quiet. Do a dig. Oh, what's this? What, right there. Dig. Find it. Did you find it? Okay. Lyme Regis is slightly more famous than Charmouth for fossils, and it's over there. This is Charmouth, pretty much the same formations. So we're going to walk along in front of these cliffs here. Eva doesn't know quite what to do because there's just so many rocks here. Uh, <laughs> we're going to have a look on the beach, on the foreshore here, and look for fossils that have weathered out and just, li just lying loose on the foreshore. That rock's too big for you. Oh, for goodness sake. Here, try this one. If you're going to pick up a rock, make it a small one. So the fossils we're likely to find here today, or hope to find here today, include ammonites. Hopefully pyrotized specimens of ammonites, so they'll have a kind of shiny, dull gold colour. It's also common to find bellumnites here which kind of look a bit like bullets. It's possible we might find dinosaur bones, ichthyosaur bones or teeth, those sorts of things, but those are a bit more rare. Ammonites is probably what we're most likely to find if we find anything at all, and we should find something. So, just gonna get along there, those rocks down there where the cliffs have naturally crumbled a little bit are the place to go. I'm not going to go and dig in this cliff full here because as I say, the fossils that you find in the cliff, most of them will not survive. They'll just crumble away to nothing. So actually what we're looking for is the fossils that have survived a little bit of rough and tumble in the surf here. They've had all of the matrix eroded off of them and they will just be loose fossils on the beach. That's the theory. We picked a day when low tide is in the middle of the day, so we have timed our visit for low tide, which means we can get out onto the foreshore, which is where I intend to search. The tide's still falling at the moment. Haven't seen anything yet, but we've only just set out. I'm gonna put the camera away now until we find something. Bit of sea glass there, weathered broken glass. I'm not here to collect sea glass today. So same kind of formation as we saw at Kimmeridge and at Quantock's Head, although different strata, I think. I think this might be a little bit lower down than Kimmeridge and possibly has been subjected to some different forces. But again, we've got similar things. We've got big, these big rectilinear blocks of uh, limestone or mudstone that have come out 
huge chunks of iron pyrite here and some of these will have formed around fossils so these big chunks of pyrite here you can see them sparkling in the sun I'm not going to collect any of that but that's iron pyrite and quite often the ammonites that you find here are have been replaced by pyrite minerals that's very possibly a fossil of some sort there a little bit slippy on here because this is like a shale type of thing here now we'll take a little piece of this shale home and i'll show you this is oil bearing shale so if we take a little piece of this shale home from the cliff here a tiny little piece i think we'd be able to actually get it to burn first find of the day jenny found some ammonites here heavily pyrotized very much eroded but you can see that was the shell of the ammonite there spiraling round very heavily pyrotized not taking that home obviously because we'd have to chisel that out and i'm not doing that yep jenny's just spotted another one there but already we're seeing ammonites that are in better condition than we saw at quantux head and at uh Kimmeridge. so it's hopeful we'll find something but i think we need the tide to go out a little bit more first okay first loose find of the day can you see it can you spot it i will zoom in on it well physical zoom there it is that's a belemnite fossil belemnites were a bit like squid so this would be the endoskeleton a bit like uh, cuttle bone that was inside this thing and there'd have been tentacles off the back end and this is possibly just a section from the top of the belemnite but there we go belemnite fossil first find of the day now one trick that's worked really successfully for me before in fossil hunting here is to look for little clusters of the pyrite nodules so that's one of them there that's a pyrite nodule sort of botryoidal form of pyrite there there might even be a fossil in the middle of that but around these rocks when the wa water sort of washes around these bigger rocks it creates little eddies and it kind of sorts the material so i'm going to look for little eddies and little clusters of that pyrite material behind or around these rocks and hopefully in there we'll find some ammonites somebody smashed up a big nodule there which has got some quartz in the middle of it or something might be calcite actually See, I'm just going to look around these rocks and in between them and see if we can find a little pile of pyrite nodules. I would say somebody's actually picked up a fossil from that little spot there. I just found that piece of pyrite there and there is my first loose ammonite of the day only partial but a really nice pyrotized specimen a little bit on the shiny side so I'm just gonna have a look around this area here because this will be a little depression or something where the waves have sorted out some of the heavier materials iron pyrite is a bit heavier than most of the other rocks another little fragment of a belemnite there I think that's what that is I'm not sure that's worth keeping actually that might be a bit of a crinoid stem but i don't think that's worth keeping it's a bit indistinct what it is i mean another reason not to clamber up the cliffs and start hammering away is a big chunk like that might just suddenly fall on you that's come from somewhere up there probably that that piece there has come from just up there so these cliffs are eroding to form the beach But uh, that process of erosion and cliff fall doesn't really care very much if you're standing underneath there. Rather interesting looking rock there. Obviously that's been broken up. as a That's formed as a rock, then been broken up, then some other mineral, probably calcite, has flowed into the gaps and created this pattern. No, it's not dinosaur skin. 
Yeah, so just down here, a little collection of pyrite pieces. Again, worth just rummaging through. Not guaranteed to find anything anywhere. There are no guarantees with this thing. But it's worth just having a little look around. It doesn't help that it's a very cold day and my eyes are watering and when I look downwards it's all blurry. That doesn't really help. So if you see anything that I've missed on the footage, do post a timestamp and a comment. Some more examples of ammonites we're not taking home. There's one there that's barely a trace. There's some more in that piece of rock there. So yeah, we were just walking along here and we, there's a massive thump, which was a piece of that cliff there falling away. Of course, you're not going to get things like that on camera unless you sit here with the camera trained on it all day. We've got other things to look for. Another piece of a bellum night there. I don't think that's worth keeping. It's been rolled a lot. That's been very eroded. We'll just leave that one. What we got here though is quite interesting. So what we got here is a bellum night still in the matrix. That's quite interesting. So that one's not eroded out yet. And I'm not going to chisel it out. There's another one there actually. So I want another one there. That one there is just about, yeah, see if you try and chisel them out, they just flake apart. So not worth it. But yeah, we've got a piece of shale here with lots of bellum nights in it. And only some of these will be durable. So this is interesting here. I think that might be an infilled burrow there, or it might be a bellamite. But this is just flaking away, this, this shale. Right, we've got a point here where there's a kind of bit of a rocky outcropping. So I think we'll have a little wander on there carefully because some of these rocks are really slippery. This shale, when it gets wet, is like soap. Yeah, Jenny's just spotted. That's a very nice one there. So we'll have a look around in amongst of these rocks here. And this is where I hope to find something. Eva, would you just be quiet? For a change there, there's a little bivalve or brachiopod shell. I reckon this could be a productive spot because there are lots of these little collections of the pyrite nodules here. So this is where I'm going to focus my attention. And these holes are from boring piddocks, which are not boring. They're quite interesting. It's a type of bivalve mollusk that lives inside rocks, inside soft rocks like this shale. And it burrows its way in. It has actually quite a soft shell. And so its way of protecting itself from predation is to burrow into the soft rock. Well, I was kind of hoping we might find a few more fossils than this. Perhaps, I mean, it's a very popular beach. And I imagine it's probably been picked over and over. So we're only finding really things that get washed up and exposed on this particular day. But again, you can see this is this very similar to what we saw at Quantuck's Head, these big slabs of shale and mudstone with cracks in them which are of old. This is possibly where it cracked up when it was mud or possibly when it cracked when it was folded and moved around in geological time. Just found another bellum night there, quite a big one, but very eroded. Again, not dinosaur skin. Oh look, and there's what we saw before. These are limpet scars. Well, that's something I didn't expect to find here today. That's an old vulcanite bottle stopper that's been weathered away. I will take that because it doesn't belong here. I think it might be quite interesting to take one of these pyrite nodules home and cut that in half with a wet saw and see what's inside. So we'll do that. We'll take one of those. We've got down here. Oh, it's just a rock.
A piece of agate there, I think that's agate. So that's Charmouth Beach along there. And I think after we've had a bite to eat, we'll have a wander along this way, which is Lyme Regis. See what we can see there. So sitting here having our picnic in the car, because it's a little bit too fresh to sit out. And there's a very hopeful little gull there, hoping I think I'm going to toss a scrap of sandwich out of the window. I'm not going to feed gulls, mainly because that will just attract all the other gulls to come. Yeah, that's a good idea. There's fish in that thing over there. <laughs> so we'll have another little wander along this way. This is towards Lyme Regis, so this is Lyme Bay. I'm going to do the Take 5 thing. Oh, if I can. I can't pick that up, unfortunately. It's attached to something in the ground, and I don't have a knife to cut that. So anyway, we'll try and find five pieces of what, refuse or plastic or whatever. And the beach is actually pretty clean. But we'll try and pick up some waste and take it home and dispose of it responsibly. Eva's barking at those bits of driftwood up there. I think she thought that was an animal. So if we can, we'll get as far along as those rocks there, I think, and then uh, turn back before the tide comes in and we get stranded. I think probably the best spot for fossils is over there. I did say I wasn't going to pick up sea glass here, but the sea glass in this particular location is rather lovely. It's big, smooth nuggets, thick nuggets of sea glass. So we will pick up some of that. I mean, it is essentially waste anyway. So we are collecting litter, although it's very inert, obviously. Yes, yeah, big, lovely nuggets of stuff. I think there was a historical landfill along here somewhere that has collapsed and fallen into the sea. And that's probably where a lot of this glass is coming from. There's a little blue piece there. Highly prized blue glass. Isn't that pretty? There's a lot of it around here, so... Good space to pick it up. Might have to do another sea glass project, but this one's not going to be a stained glass window because these are little nuggets. So we might have to think of something else to do with all of this lot. I've been distracted with sea glass. I think Jenny might have found something, but I suspect it's probably a thing that's too big to carry. Let's go and see if she's found anything. So, yeah, there's one, an ammonite still in the matrix. This isn't a piece of shale boulder we're getting to the point where we might find loose fossils along here in amongst these rocks if we're lucky so we keep looking there's a lot more little pockets of pyrite shingle down this end see that there just from the shape of that i reckon there might be an ammonite inside of that Maybe we'll take that one home and slice it in half and see if there's any trace of an ammonite inside. Now we'll need to take care here not to get cut off by the incoming tide. The tide is just about to start turning, so we'll just keep an eye on it. There's plenty of beach up there to walk on if we need to. This is interesting, this is a shale layer that's been exposed. So we might see some surface fossils in here.
Nope. It's all a question of being at the right layer. These different layers are all originally layers of mud and silt that accumulated in a large shallow ocean and then were compressed and over time formed into shale. And if they were compressed and heated a bit more, they would have formed oil, it, pockets of oil trapped by salt domes or sandstone or whatever. Um, this stuff here is halfway to becoming oil. Yeah, I can't tell whether that's an infill made by people or whether that's just a landslide, a natural landslide. But look at the layers in the cliffs there. Completely natural, those are the layers of sediment in that big shallow sea that used to be here millions and millions of years ago. I haven't seen any significant fossils. So, I don't know, maybe we're just looking in the wrong place. But we found a couple of little things, which is fine. Jenny's found something. Oh yeah, a little ammonite in a piece of shale. Yeah. Now, I don't think that one's worth keeping, to be honest. I think that will no, just crumble away. away yeah. Time to head back before we get cut off by the tide. We'll have a little scout along. We're gonna make this a leisurely stroll back along the beach. So we'll have a little wander back. I think I probably will pick up some more of that sea glass because it's just so nice. I said I wasn't going to, but I changed my mind. Interesting collection of rocks there. That looks like a piece of agate or something. A big old chunk of agate, if it is. I don't know, it might be just calcite. It's quite heavy and it feels quite hard. I don't think that's calcite. I think that's probably a piece of flint type material. So most of this sand here, this greenish grey sand, is probably iron pyrite. Part of a very large ammonite there, I would say. Yeah. It's definitely got a spiral to it. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's definitely an ammonite in the middle there. Yeah. And I think that probably went all the way around there. Well, so it's the... there. Yeah. See, those are the nodule things that if you probably dug that out and smashed it in half, or cut it in half, you might find something worth keeping inside. Yeah. But, not going to do that. So let's have a little roundup of today's finds. So here's the so here's the segment of ammonite that Jenny found. This is a one that's been infilled with limestone. Still slight traces, I think, of the actual original shell material on there, but most of this is a cast of the cavity left behind by the ammonite inside the rock. So there's that one. 
there's this vulcanite bottle stopper which has been quite worn down this is a screw thread bottle stopper for an internal thread on a ginger beer or beer or lemonade bottle probably dating from the 1940s or something like that 1950s maybe you know, it's been tumbling around there in the beach to the point that it's worn down to well almost an unrecognizable form we have three belemnite fossils they look like bullets don't they they are see some kind of almost segmentation on that one these are the cast probably of the endoskeleton of a squid-like organism that lived millions and millions of years ago i think it's jurassic this is a, a, a jurassic organism um but anyway so those are belemnite fossils star find i think is probably this little ammonite which i'll give you a close-up of but this is an ammonite which has been infilled with iron pyrite so it's ever so slightly golden and shiny. Then this rather odd looking nugget of pyrite, really heavy for its size actually, because obviously it's an iron mineral. I'm gonna cut this in half and see what's inside it. I don't think we'll find anything in there, but that one is gonna be my test piece for cutting two other pieces of pyrite in half. There's this one, which I'm pretty sure is formed around an ammonite fossil or formed in the, or perhaps the expanded cavity from an ammonite fossil. You can kind of almost see that there might have been a spiral shape to this. I'm gonna to try to slice that in half that way and we'll see what we find inside. Some rather tantalizing little traces of a different mineral inside there, which might be quite interesting. And then I've got this one, which is the same idea. And again, I think probably contains an ammonite fossil inside of there. All of this surface texture here is just kind of bubbling and, and of the crystallization of the iron pyrite. But again, we've got this layer of different minerals in there and, and with this one, there's almost like a chambered look to it along here, which I'm really, really hoping. I got high hopes for this one. I think if we slice this in half, I'll probably slice it just slightly left of center so that we get one piece that's exactly half. Uh, I'm hoping that when we slice this in half, we're gonna find a really interesting remnant of an ammonite inside of there. But I got, so, so these I'm gonna cut in half on the wet saw, uh, which is gonna be interesting because it's a cold and frosty morning out there. And I've gotta go outside and stand in front of a machine that sprays me with cold water. So that'll be fun. We also got all of this sea glass. Now I did say I wasn't gonna pick up sea glass, but the sea glass there at Lime Bay is such lovely chunky nuggets of glass, I kinda couldn't resist. It's all really nice thick pieces. Now what's the reason for that? I think the reason is that all of those rocks there afford ample opportunity for thinner and flatter pieces of glass to be smashed into little pieces. So the thinner bits of glass that have been on that beach from bottles and so on, are now one with the sand. The thicker pieces are the pieces that have survived smashing against the rocks. And so all of the thicker bits from the bottom of the bottle or maybe the neck are the pieces that have actually survived and become tumbled pieces of sea glass. And so really nice chunky nuggets of sea glass. I don't know what I'm gonna do with them yet, but um, I'm gonna collect up some more. We'll probably go back there again sometime. And I'm gonna collect up some more bits of sea glass and I'll think of something to do with this, but as I said earlier, it's not going to be a stained glass window like I made before, because these are not really suitable for that kind of thing. I'm gonna make something else out of these. Just to set expectations, I'm not gonna set these in resin because I don't really like doing that kind of thing. Now, I have to go outside so that I can cut these in half. Just to note, if you haven't seen me use this wet saw before, it's possibly going to look like I'm doing something quite unsafe by putting my hands close to the blade. It's not in fact unsafe and rather than repeat the whole safety message I'm just going to link to a previous video where I've discussed the safety of using the saw in the kind of way you see me using it. So I'll link to that so in case you think that's unsafe. So off to the garden and we'll cut these in half.
OK, well, that didn't yield the results I'd hoped for because actually what's inside of here is pretty dull and uniform, although there is an interesting curved feature there. Little streak of shiny pyrite there. Fool's gold, obviously, is what this is. This is the one that I hoped would yield something resembling an ammonite in there. And, oh, yeah, you can see. Actually, no, you can see something. I reckon if we sanded that, maybe. I will get a close-up picture of that. And I think you can actually see something in there. But it's nowhere near as clear and distinct as I hoped. And it did crumble and fall apart while I was cutting it. This one, I didn't even attempt to cut because it's just too thin. If I get my fingers that close to the blade, I am putting myself at risk. So this one, I think it's going to have to stay as it is, but I'm pretty sure that is the shape of an ammonite there. And I wonder if, to the extent that this is the shape of an ammonite, it might just be that there was a cavity formed by the decomposition of an ammonite embedded in mud and as that mud formed into stone, the pyrite mineral intruded into that cavity and just filled the shape and kind of maybe extended it a little bit with these bubbles. So anyway, this one, well, I'll see if I can get you a picture that shows you what I think I'm seeing. Yeah, I don't think I'm imagining that, but I'll get a close up picture. So I'm prepared to concede that this might be entirely my imagination, but I think I can discern the outline of the spiral form of an ammonite in exactly the place I was expecting to find it. As I say, perfectly willing to concede that could be the case and I might just be applying wishful thinking here, but I'll outline what I think I can see on here. Anyway, the only other thing I forgot to mention was this little thing, which is a piece of crinoid stem. Now, I know another beach quite close to Charmouth that's much better for crinoid stems, so another time we'll take a trip to that beach and we'll pick up just crinoid stems. The state of my fingers from this handling this pyrite. Unfortunately, the dust and mud that comes off of this when you grind it is just filthy and it really stains your fingers. I will now hand you back to Coastal Shrimp to wrap up the video. So that was our little trip to Charmouth, fossil hunting. Didn't find very much, but it's been a lovely day and really nice to walk along the beach. I hope that's been interesting. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.